Welcome back to another episode of Runo Connections. I'm Clayton Patterson with Technical Support. And I'm Eric Kunz, Senior Product Manager. And today we're going to talk autopilots, specifically the NAF Pilot 300 that we selected for this retrofit. Now I know we've been through the specifications on this boat before, but as a quick refresher, this boat is running four 300 horsepower Mercury Verado outboards, which is a lot of weight and a lot of engine to swing around with an autopilot. That's, that's right. true. It's 1,200 yeah. horsepower. Yeah, 1,200. That's a, lot. <laughs> that's a lot of horsepower. Yeah, the great thing about the Nav Pilot 300 for this 39 CV with all this power on the back mm -hmm. is that it's an adaptive pilot. It's a set it and forget it pilot. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically compensate for fuel loading or for fish on board mm -hmm. or for people. And, mm -hmm. You know, it's just and for weather especially. Yeah, current drift. Yeah, current all that drift. Stuff, yeah. any, anything that comes in, mm -hmm. the pilot has an adaptive algorithm that just sits there and optimizes itself all the time. It's really impressive. Yeah. I've seen it work under load and under conditions before a number it's of really times. It's really amazing. You just don't have to touch yeah. it. Okay, another thing about the Pilot that makes it really perfect for this boat mm -hmm. is the fact that it's got the phantom feedback feature. Mm -hmm. That means that there's nothing in the back of the boat near the engines for rudder reference or any mechanical kind of gear that we yeah. need. There's nothing back there. The whole autopilot consists of everything right here in the helm so and less in the console. To fail, basically. So exactly. There's less mm -hmm. moving parts, yeah. less parts to fail. And the nice thing about the Napoleon 300 is that we can go in and probably use the existing pump on this boat. Oh, really? Okay. That's right. Now, this pump, uh, a little bit more about Mercury Verado steering, mm -hmm. is that this is a Verado helm. It's a power steering helm. Oh, okay. It's a high-pressure helm. So you have to be careful with the pump selection, but if the existing pump is working okay, there's no reason why we can't leverage it and use it with the Nav Pilot 300. And we can still use the power steering to go along with it, That's right. right. The power steering is built in as part of the feature of the boat itself. That's part of that Mercury Verado helm system. So power steering is included, and the nice thing is that the autopilot, because of that power steering, the autopilot pump doesn't have to work too hard. Mm -hmm. So, we'll, like I said, we'll try to use the existing pump and we'll go from there. Okay. Further, one nice thing is that this boat also has a helm sensor, a, a helm motion sensor. So, when you move the helm, there's a little hydraulic switch in there that we can use uh, for the Nav Pilot 300 okay. safe helm feature. And that's really nice. And maybe even give it a little different kind of power steering. We're okay. going to play with that and show everybody how okay. that works. So we're continuing to pull out all the old equipment that's installed on the boat. Mm -hmm. One of the things we just found was the uh, compass ball for the autopilot. And yeah, it kind of hid it down underneath. Yeah, it's, it's hidden, which is good. But uh, I tell you, the mount is really pretty, <laughs> pretty awful. And here's this compass so, ball. Wow. So that's the compass. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, these things. I'm, um, I'm not sure how. Yeah, I don't think they're. I'm not sure, but kind of does look like that magic eight ball. <laughs> Yeah. It looks like a magic eight ball. Yeah. Do I know what my heading is? Rarely. It is, it is decidedly. <laughs> it is decidedly uncertain. <laughs> Will we get back to shore? Ask again later. Uh oh. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. So anyway, we're finding the right spot to put the PG seven hundred, which is a quality product. Doesn't have a mount like that. It mounts solidly. Yeah. And the nice thing about the seven hundred is that I can mount it on a horizontal bulkhead or a vertical bulkhead mm -hmm. because it's got that really flexible mount. Yeah. So we're going to put that in a little different spot but up here where it's out of the way yeah. and it won't be affected. I notice there's a tool bag down here too. Yeah. And that Garmin yeah, if you look uh, down uh, in here. Yeah. This that, is a real this yeah. is a real common This issue. is a real common problem where they mount they drop a tool bag mm -hmm. right next to the compass. So if if the if the compass was here and you put all that ferrous metal right here in that tool bag, which is probably about 30 pounds of wrenches and stuff, uh, that would definitely affect the compass and affect the steering performance of the boat. I've got the processor unit in my hands. It's it's a pigtail design, so it makes the installation fairly easy. I can cut the cable and make the connections in a lot of different ways. One of the nice things we're going to do with this boat is we're going to take out the existing rusty reversing pump that's in there. Let's get it started and see how it works. So I just got done physically installing the Nat Pilot 300 processor. I moved it out from underneath the console to inside the cabin behind a panel. I also just installed the PG700 compass uh, up here in a new place that's a little up, bit higher up out of the way so the tools won't get in the way and cause any problems and it should work out really well. The nice thing about both of those components is that they're both NMEA 2000, so I can put a multi-T right here in the cabin behind that panel and bring in both the GPS as well as the lead coming back up and make it actually part of the backbone. So there will actually be a termination resistor here too. Now that we've installed the processor, let's put the control head in. 
Now the new control head and the original existing control head are exactly the same size. As a matter of fact, they even use the same mounting hole. So we didn't have to modify the dash really at all, except drilling the two mounting studs to put it in. That was about it. That's right. They both adhere to the same German DIN or DIN standard, which is about 110 millimeter square. Yeah. It's really convenient when you have the same size and all the manufacturers do that. It makes retrofitting these kinds oh, of yeah. you know, it instruments just makes it a snap super easy. While Clayton's doing that, let's talk a little bit more about the fantastic features of the NatPilot 300. There's the gesture remote controller, which is amazing. This is, cool one. this is really cool. So the great thing about this remote controller is that you can use it as a second station. It has batteries. It'll last for about a year. Um, or you can use it as just a handheld point and shoot device. So the great thing about it is if I hold my hand in one direction, point at where I'm steering right now, press the button, turn to a new position and release it, the autopilot will automatically follow my gesture command. In addition, it'll also show a blue line on the MFD to show the same thing. Mm -hmm. So those two features are fantastic. Also, the uh, NatPilot 300 is an NMEA 2000 certified pilot. This makes installation super easy. Mm -hmm. So as Clayton just installed that control head, mm -hmm. just plug in an NMEA 2000 backbone mm -hmm. to the control head and to the processor without the need to run a dedicated cable between the two. Super, super easy. In fact, let's, uh, let's go down to the keys yep. and show you Captain Mike Paget and Tim Moore using the gesture controller and Sabiki mode. Today we're down in the beautiful Florida Keys with Captain Mike Paget. Mike is owner of Best Marine Products out of Miami, Florida and a Furuno Pro Staff member. And today he's going to show us how he uses the NavPilot 300 on his boat. What I have on this is a triple 300 Racy Mercury's with an Optimus steering system, which makes it a, with the NavPilot 300, a completely stable and just worry-free autopilot. One of the things I love most about the autopilot is being able to run in any offshore conditions and having no deviation or wobble. We're gonna show you right now how stable this autopilot is. Let's take the boat up to about 40 knots and see how well this autopilot tracks. Let's do it. about one of the unique features found on Furuno's NavPilot 711C and NavPilot 300 autopilots, that being Sabiki mode. So what is Sabiki mode? It's a way of working your autopilot in reverse. Whether you're sitting over top of a wreck trying to fish and just want to stay on position, you're backed up to a buoy and want to stay on that buoy, or like today, we're sitting in front of a bridge waiting for it to open. Sabiki mode is the mode you want to use. Let's see how it works. So we've been sitting at the bridge now for about five minutes with Sabiki mode on the NavPilot 300 holding us in an eight knot current and keeping our position nice and steady. So now what we're gonna do is take it out of Sabiki mode and watch us drift. Instead of me having to man the helm and hold position and marker while we're bait fishing, I can press Sabiki mode and set it and forget it and add to collect and bait and be more productive. That's just some of the features of the NatPilot 300. Now back to you guys. So that's it. We're all done with the NatPilot 300 installation. The great thing now is that we really don't even need a sea trial with the NatPilot 300 because it's completely adaptive. We just have to go out and spin the compass to align and compensate it. And then once we're done with that, we can just take the boat out and start using the yeah. autopilot. It'll automatically easy? adapt. Yeah. Further, the nice thing about these gesture controllers is that you don't just need, you don't just have one if you don't want one. You can have up to three per autopilot. That's a lot. So if you have a second station on a, in a, a split level boat and you have two, two, you know, two operational stations, 
put another one up there and you That's can link impressive. it. Exactly. Or even have one more dedicated for using around the boat for anchoring mm -hmm. or for, you know, for moving the engines when you're cleaning and washing everything down. Mm -hmm. Really convenient. Mm -hmm. Also, the Napa 300 is fully controllable from your TZ Touch 2 MFDs. So even if you didn't have one of these gesture controllers up top, you could still have full control of the autopilot from a TZ Touch MFD. That's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. The Nav Pilot 300 really introduces a lot of unique and innovative features that are really gonna be an advantage to a sport fish boat just like this. Absolutely. Honestly. So whether it's the adaptive steering, the sabiki mode, or the gesture control, Team Fortunate is gonna have a major advantage on the water. So thanks for watching, and if you like the exciting content that you've seen, click the link below to like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you'll be the first one to know when we have new content available with new product information and new exciting stuff from Furuno.